Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 130 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of ST segment elevation myocardial infarction in which we had difficulties with ST segment resolution. The patient presented with inferior ST elevation myocardial infarction. The baseline hemodynamics and EKG when the patient right to the cath lab are shown with ST segment elevation with reciprocal ST segment depressions. In patients with CAM with STEMI, that is non anterior, as in this case, we initially do diagnostic and geography of the left main, followed by PCI of the right coronary if this is what appears to be the culprit vessel. So, in this particular case, we engaged the left main and uh, did not find any culprit lesions, although there was disease in the LAD and the circumflex. On the right coronary artery, there was a significant lesion, a 90 plus percent lesion in the mid right coronary artery that appeared to be the culprit lesion, although interestingly, there was TIMI3 flow at baseline. The lesion was easily crossed with a workhorse guide wire and dilated, provided a nice result. There appeared to be some disease at the ostium of this branch that may be the PDA, but there was undergrade flow. We did perform intravascular ultrasound that demonstrated that the right coronary artery was of large caliber, about 4.5 millimeters in diameter, and it did have a significant lesion in the mid-segment with a, a large uh, uh, volume of plaque. We placed a 4.5 by 30 millimeter drug eluting stand that did provide a nice result. However, despite that, we continue to have ST segment elevation and reciprocal ST segment depression. What to do next? We thought we had taken care of the culprit lesion. However, the patient continues to have ST segment elevation, which could be the result of microvascular dysfunction or potentially long standing occlusion of the coronary artery. However, the patient had presented fairly acutely with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. So our hypothesis was that this branch was significant and we inserted a workhorse wire that was aimed to go to this branch and recanalize it. However, the wire accidentally went into this large branch, which actually is the right posterior descending artery that was completely occluded at its ostium. Immediately after we went through, there was restoration of undergrade flow and there was resolution of ST segment elevation and the reciprocal changes, as well as relief of the patient's chest discomfort. We placed a drag eluting stand across the origin of the posterior descending artery, and then we were able to wire with difficulty the right posterior lateral branch using a dual lumen microcatheter, a Suzuki, and then perform balloon dilatation with a 2.0 millimeter balloon that did provide a nice final result with TIMI3 flow in both the PDA as well as the right posterior lateral branch. So in summary, this is a case in which we treated what we thought was the culprit vessel. However, the patient had continued ST segment elevation. And the reason for that is that the culprit vessel was actually not the 90% lesion in the mid-right, but it was an occlusion of the right posterior descending artery that was a flash occlusion and was not uh, immediately apparent or coronary in geography. So whenever there is no ST segment resolution after treating what we think is the culprit lesion, it is important to reassess the angiogram and determine if uh, all the potential culprit lesions have been addressed in this case, serendipity played a role by our guide wire, which was aimed for this posterior lateral branch, actually accidentally entering into the PDA and leading us to realize that the PDA occlusion was the culprit vessel. After this was recanalized, then the ST segment resolved and the patient's symptoms resolved. Thank you.